day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And let us all move outside and worship out there. Right? Oh, what a beautiful day. I hope you have the opportunity to get outside today and enjoy it. Because we don't get many like this anymore, it seems. You have, or should have anyway, an insert that was handed to you. And this is a song that we will be singing midway through the service. It will be sung to the tune of, A Mighty Fortress is Our God. So that, that will be, uh, we, did, we did well so far uh, at Cobb today. So we'll see how it goes now here. You can do it. You can do it. All right. Uh, next week, we will be at Livingston. Um, it is our Native American Ministries Sunday. We do have the, um, uh, the audio help, the loop system for hearing at Livingston. So if you uh, need that, we have that available. Uh, our guest uh, will be Reverend Charles Brower, and he is a very, very traveled and interesting gentleman. He is going to be staying uh, with us for fellowship afterwards. So I hope you take advantage of this opportunity to meet him and learn a few things. And then on the 29th, we are doing a hymn sing Sunday here again. Uh, one service, all voices joining here for that hymn sing Sunday. Are there other announcements this morning? All right. Then once you stand for our call to worship, Is anyone among you sick? Then he must call for the elders of the church, and they are to pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. Is anyone among you hurting, in need of restoration, aching from being beaten about by the Lord? Then anointeth my head with oil, because of God's goodness to me, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Please remain standing for our opening hymn. We'll find it on page 328. Surely the goodness of the Lord is in this place. We'll sing it through three times.
So we come together, this family of faith of ours, and we lift up prayer for ourselves, for loved ones, for situations. What are we praying about this morning? Uh, continued prayers for Jim Larson as he uh, undergoes cancer treatment. Let us bow in prayer. Holy God, we gather today in your presence. We gather in this beautiful church, this church we call home. And it's on days like this that we find it easy to feel your healing. It's on days when the sunshine is fresh and the air is comfortable, when the grass is green and the birds sing, and everything in nature feels where it's supposed to be. It's on days like this that we can walk outside and easily feel your healing presence. And we remember in the lesson of spring that there is there is newness, there is renewing and that you are an eternal God. Jesus walked throughout his life healing people and even the woman who had the bleeding disease for many years touched just the hem of Jesus' garment and was healed. There is healing all around us. Help us, God, to have motivation to be healed and to be healing for others. Help us to think healing thoughts and, and say healing words to those around us. Help us always to think the best of others, to lift others up. Help us to place our needs and the needs of others before you so that you may heal and restore. God, this morning we bring before you Jim Larson we know that his journey has been and will be a difficult one. We ask that you, you place your hands upon him and be with his doctors and care team. 
and be with him and give him a heart filled with peace and courage. Also be with the John Adamitz family, Lord. Surround them with comfort. God, be with us as we continue to minister to the community in all our different ways. As we come to you this morning for healing and then become healing to others. We ask all of this in the name of Jesus Christ who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Stand.
guys are good. Very good, very good. As we prepare to take our offering this morning, we are reminded that the United Methodist Church is known for its generosity throughout the world. We are known as giving people. In fact, the, um, the seven United Methodist Churches in Ukraine right now are working very hard um, with uh, the refugees. They are working with the churches outside uh, their area in Poland uh, to try to make um, safety arrangements for refugees. And they're also working with the uh, United Methodist Church worldwide, which part of our giving is going for. Some of our giving stays in-house. Uh, we use it to keep the lights on. We use it for ministry. Um, but keep in mind that all of our giving goes to glorify God. Because it 
paints such a beautiful picture for us. It was written by David, who, as we know, at one time was a shepherd. And we get this, this imagery of the beautiful hills and of um, the shepherd as he's guiding his sheep along. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. He anoints my head with oil. Now, I always thought he anoints my head with oil was um, figurative language for he, he blesses me. It's like kind of a, a blessing of the psalmist. I never knew this parallel. You see, sheep can get caught in the briars. And it's not the briars that do this, but being caught in the briars the sheep can actually die trying to get untangled because there are these horrid little flies that lay eggs, goodness, lay eggs in their nostrils that turn into worms that can drive the sheep to beat their head against a rock, sometimes to death. So the shepherd anoints their whole head with oil. And that forms a barrier of protection from the gnats that threaten to destroy the sheep. And then there is peace. So that is why he anoints my head with oil takes on a whole new, a whole new idea. It's the protection. The shepherd protects his sheep by anointing them with oil. Throughout the Bible, oil represents the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit of God. Oil is commonly referred to as shemen in Hebrew. And it's used around 170 different times in different contexts. It was believed that olive oil served as a symbol of divine light, intellectual power. In addition to being essential for lighting lamps, because it was, after all, the electricity of the time, it was also considered capable of making paths visible and clear, as it was associated with light, in addition to its purifying and calming properties, the oil was believed to purify the body. So I've been studying the book this past week, Healing Oils, in preparation for today. The book is by David Stewart, PhD, and it's, it's very fascinating. Essential oils are referenced in the Bible over 1,000 times. Yes, 70% of the books of the Bible mention essential oils and or the aromatic plants from which they derive. These oils are the vital fluid of the plants. They're lifeblood, if you will. They're called essential because they are necessary for the life of the plant, and they contain the essence of the plant. The essential oils contain the life force, the intelligence, the vibrational energy that imbues them with the healing power that helps people. 
As you know, Native American culture is steeped in storytelling and tradition. And spending a little bit of time with the Native Americans, um, I've been intrigued by the art of storytelling. There are actually storytellers, which is a, it's an actual title like Master Chef. There's a handful of them um, throughout the United States. I am not one of them, but I, I love the art that they do. It's very physical and there's a cadence. Um, Lorenzo Max is one of them. He's a Navajo elder that shares that a long, long time ago, the people of the world walked the same path known as Haibekhe Hoshoan, or the Cosmic Road. This included the holy people, the spirit people, the four-legged people, the people that lived in the water, the people that flew, the two-legged people, all life was created by Kichimana II, the Great Spirit. On this road, there was only Ho's Ho, or beauty and harmony and balance. One wasn't superior to the next. This is the story of how the plant people became the foundation of life. One day, the world gradually changed, and simple life soon became harsh orders. All people traveled on this road until they started to try to control and dominate one another. And when they started to wander off the cosmic road, they came up with ways to hurt each other. One group would create evil ailments and diseases to inflict upon another group. And other groups would retaliate and spiritual warfare began. The plant people got together and they held a council on what to do. In their wisdom, they decided that they were going to try to undo what was created. The people had fallen off the cosmic road and had already opened their eyes to other things. Some plant people decided to become an antidote for the disease or evil that was created. Others decided to be food. And so the plant people became nourishment and cure for the body. The plant people became azi, medicine and food. The plant people, the plant people offer holds hold back to us. The plant people are to be respected they have much to teach us and much to offer. Our relationship with plants is deep in scripture. Plant essence or oil is a means of dedication, a consecration to God in the book of Genesis. In the book of Deuteronomy, it's a vital part of worship and sacrificial offerings. It's used to consecrate the tabernacle and set everything in it as holy, as well as set Aaron and his sons apart as holy in their priesthood in Exodus and Leviticus. Oil signified the calling of God. Priests, prophets, and kings were all anointed. Oil is representative of the joy released of the Holy Spirit. It's an act of courtesy and hospitality toward guests. Jesus was anointed. 
in the scriptures, he was anointed on his feet. And of course, you remember Judas was complaining about the waste of this costly oil being spilled over Jesus' feet. But Jesus calls this a good and beautiful thing. He affirms the anointing. Understand that oil does not do the anointing itself. Oil is not magical. The Holy Spirit does the anointing. The oil is merely a conduit for us to receive that healing. It has healing properties. And that it's a blessing. Also understand that healing doesn't always come in the form that, that we might recognize. God always, always heals us. But not as we may understand it. The psalmist says, he anoints my head with oil. Are we like sheep sometimes? Stuck? Bothered by the little flies? Do we beat our head against the wall trying to stop the mental and the physical or emotional pain experience? God, anoint my head with oil so that I might have peace until you come find me. Make it possible, God, for us to rest and fix our hearts and minds and spirit upon you and be at peace. Amen. So I'm going to offer I'm going to offer service of anointing and what I'm going to do is um, give thanks over the oil and then I'll have you come up you can stand or you can kneel uh, whatever your preference is if you choose to uh, you can indicate if you want it on your hand or on your forehead uh, you can stay up here if you want to. You can sit in the front pew and pray for a while. You can go back and sit down, whatever, whatever you're comfortable with. So I will explain this. We'll do a Thanksgiving over the oil, and then I will invite you to come up. May grace and peace be yours in the abundance, in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. We have come to lift up our brothers and sisters before the Lord that they might receive healing. Let those who seek God's healing open their hearts to the Spirit of the Lord. Almighty and everlasting God, who can banish all affliction, both of soul and of body, Show forth your power upon those in need, that by your mercy all may be restored to serve you afresh in holiness of living, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O oh God, the giver of health and salvation, we give thanks to you for the gift of oil. As your holy apostles anointed many who were sick and healed them, so pour out your Holy Spirit on us and on this gift, that those who in faith and repentance receive this anointing may be made whole. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. You may come. 
forward. Now, would you please stand as we sing our closing hymn? Thank you.